Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Advisor. Today, I'm very excited because we have a very special guest today. We have Jeremy Stiegel on the show. And anyone who doesn't know who he is, well, he's an author. He is a coach that focuses on change. And today, he is going to be talking about different ways to change yourself in a positive manner. He's going to show you tools and techniques to make you the person that you want to become. And it's very easy if you use the right steps and techniques. And today, Jeremy is going to show you how and the benefits that you can have by actually following his way of doing things. And it, if you want to know the great ways of doing things, Jeremy is going to tell you because he knows his stuff. So Jeremy, take it away. Tell everybody who you are and what you do. Well, everyone, uh, my name is Jeremy Stiegel. I am a coach, author, and speaker with Where the Change Happens Coaching. Um, yeah, uh, tell a little bit about myself. So uh, my journey really began um, after uh, getting divorced back in, uh, I think, 2015. Um, was what it was. I just recognized that my partner and I hadn't had a conversation clearly about values and what we wanted out of the relationship. So as I was continuing my journey forward, dating someone else, my mother ended up getting sick and coming down and passing away with cancer, unfortunately. I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, but the, the partner that I was with at the time I was starting to notice patterns repeating around relationship, communication, finance. And even though she was there supporting me with my mother passing, I was in this transition point recognizing that life is never going to be long enough. And that if I was going to do something of any value that's meaningful to me, like now is the only time that I had because tomorrow was not promised to me. Yeah. So recognizing I had my own work to do, I decided to move from Des Moines, Iowa down to South Florida to stretch my comfort zone in the workplace and just find a new environment to be in. And recognizing I hadn't really done a lot of work and researching what was down there, what I wanted to get out of the experience. Yeah. And so I committed to being there for two years, starting a new sales territory. And as I was working on myself, I started reading personal development books, getting into podcasts, and that inspired uh, Where the Change Happens, my blog. Well, it started as a blog. Yeah. I just writing about my journey of transformation, what I was doing, was what I was experiencing as results. And I just started noticing that things were really resonating with my new coworkers, with my sales tour territory, and the people that I was engaging with in South Florida. Um, even though I didn't really enjoy some of the culture, some of the, the heat, hurricanes, you know, yeah. some things that are down there. I'm like, what can I focus on that is only unique to hear to this experience. If now is the only time I will be here, what can I do? So yeah. I came up with my my bucket list, what's only in Florida. I got season tickets for the Florida Panthers being a hockey fan. Yeah. And I just focused on doing that and being on my journey and connecting with people. And I felt inspired to um, turn that my blog post into my first book, which I self-published um, and called it Where the Change Happens, just to share mm -hmm. that journey on a wider capacity. Right. And um, I, at that time, I was also moving to Seattle because I was like, I know I don't want to be here. Where do I want to be? Yeah. I started researching taxes, weather, the culture, the community, different things in the region that align with me being close to water, mountains, and the, the I like the climate up here, believe it or not. I, I don't mind it raining. Um, <laughs> when they announced they were getting an NHL uh, expansion team in 2019, I'm like, Seattle's my spot. So I, I moved up here, self-published my first book, and just committed to continuing the writing process and continuing my journey. Yeah. Um, also, that move was aligned with a relocation promotion, you know, in the workplace, things were working out, hitting my sales numbers, doing the things that they needed me to be doing. So getting to Seattle, I decided that I really want to try to find a new way to connect with readers. And yeah. that was through writing a fiction story. Um, where the change happens is nonfiction. It's my, my journey of what I did, what you can try, what might work for you. It's somewhere to right. start. Mm -hmm. But I want to get boots on the ground of what's an immersive experience of what did it feel like? I mean, what were the questions? What was that process that you got from recognizing that you're repeating patterns to actually living a fulfilled life and you're actually yeah. moving forward where you want to be? Right. So I hired a writing coach to help me with writing dialogue and enrolled in a, a coaching training program. And it just inspired me to, I mean, the, the book, I spent a year, 18 months on it. It was, it's, it's just a labor of love. I'm just so grateful and, and excited that it's out there. But it also inspired me through this entire process to continue writing other books and finding other topics that I've been developing, that I've been working on, that I'm curious about. To yeah. Just continue connecting with, you know, the community of people who are looking for new ways 
to change, but don't quite know how to begin that process. Right. And I have since left my job um, working in corporate, you know, paint sales. And now I'm living this fulfilled life for the last, you know, year and a half. And it's like, I'm living where the change happens. I am where the change happens. We all are. And right. right now it's about sharing the story and connecting with people with the capacity that the good Lord gives me to right. show up and be with them on their journey. And that is uh, why I'm here today. That's amazing. I love it. I love it. I love how you journeyed trying to find what your true passion was, your purpose in life, because a lot of times people struggle their entire lives figuring out what their passion is, what is their true purpose in life. And it really is, it's what brings you joy. You know, it's, it's what, when you get up in the morning and you get out of bed, are you happy with the way the rest of your day is going to go? Are you happy where you're going to work? Are you feeling like you're just dragging your feet? Or are you really energetic and say, yes, today is going to be a great day. And when you feel like today is going to be a great day, you know you're in the right spot. And what I love about what you do is that you focus on change. And as we were talking before, I feel that is such an important topic because one of the biggest problems that most people in this world struggle from is change. You know, we all need to change to improve. Nobody is perfect. The word perfect doesn't exist. There is no such thing. And in order to improve ourselves as a person, we need to incorporate change into our daily lives. That means every single day we should be doing something to make ourselves better. But the problem with our society is that most people fear change. They are scared of it. Either like I was mentioning before, they're either scared that they're going to fail. They're looking at the negative. They're not looking at the positive things that could occur. And those negative things are holding them back. And, you know, it, it, there's so many reasons why people are so fearful of change, but it exists in our society big time and it's causing people to get stuck in life. Now, have you noticed that in your own experience working with clients? Yeah. You know, it often comes to something that happened in the past or, and you find a way to respond to protect yourself or to resolve that whatever in that moment. And then you just kind of stay you, you do the same thing again because it worked once like why not do it again it worked again well and i'm protected i feel good it's working and if it's not producing what you want but you're comfortable you know it's just helping recognize where you've become comfortable and that there's a disconnect between something that you desire something that's burning inside that in instinctively and that you know that you want but yeah. Now, all of a sudden, the way that you're showing up to, you know, your opportunities, it's a response from something that happened once a long time ago. Yeah. I find so many times that a lot of times the things we go through in life always go back to the root cause. And if it, whether it's childhood years, and that happens a lot for most people or something traumatizing that happens, but I, I feel like, you know, a lot of people also build a wall up for protection mm -hmm. and, and that, you know, that, or they just don't express their emotions and they repress their emotions. And so therefore their, their fear, their change becomes stagnant because, you know, when you repress your emotions, you're not knowing what's going on with yourself. So therefore you can't make positive change. Now, do you find there are certain techniques and tools that you can implement into your lives that could actually have a huge effect on the, getting over that fear of change and moving forward in life? Um, I, I do. I think, and one of the main things that I like um, to suggest to people is to look at the context in your relationship to whatever this is, to change to your situation through journaling, through having a relationship with yourself and creating a safe space where you can have a dialogue where there is no judgment. There yeah. is nothing but what is with how you feel with whatever is coming out of you. Yeah. And just being okay with saying, this really sucks. <laughs> I am not happy with this. I do not, yeah. I do not accept this sort of behavior in the workplace. Like, what do I want to do about this? Right. And just rant. Mm -hmm. Get it out, you know, like I know I like I've had when I was a sales rep back in, you know, back in the day and I was driving yeah. around feeling any sort of of stress in the car. Yeah. Perhaps the exercise was just screaming mm -hmm. and releasing that frustration and yeah. anxiety 
instead of holding it in, noticing that I'm starting to feel some kind of way. It's like, what yeah. is going on here? So, you know, whether it's driving, you know, just saying out loud, journaling, even a couple of days ago, there was an opportunity where um, in an environment where a lot of stuff was going on and just noticing that I was getting anxious and frustrated and trying to control a situation. I'm like, what is it that I'm trying to hold on to right now? Right. Like, nothing is against me. Yeah. It's just me making this decision right now. And that allowed me to take a breath and take a step back and to just notice my emotions and to spend some time with where am I at? And really, how do I want to show up right now? Right. And, you know, I, I think that those are, are some, some good ways if you're by yourself that you can start to engage with a relationship with yourself. Because I think that if we don't have some grace with our own humanity, it's hard to extend grace to others and their humanity. Yeah, and I agree. I feel like I like the comment that you made where you talked about taking a step back because so many times people are in the moment are so anxious, you know, and they get so wrapped up with their emotions that they don't really, they can't make valid and, and good decisions, you know, but if we take a step back and we evaluate ourselves, sometimes that could really do a lot of good, you know, and, and help us understand ourselves. Like, do you like meditation, for example? Absolutely. I love it every day. Yes. Um, I meditate in the morning for 20 minutes and in the afternoons, 20, 30 minutes. And that's also part of um, my product, uh, my net action plan for productivity is what I call it. I write about yeah. it in the book where the change happens. And it's just about having, you know, certain activities that are supportive of your well-being and having that as part of your practice that if you are in need of, you know, some support, that's a good place to show up and being stressed, like driving in, in my car, living in Florida, I was seeing three car accidents a day for two straight years. I don't exaggerate. I saw yeah. a lot of stuff that I, I'm probably a little traumatized by because I don't enjoy driving anymore. Yeah. But, um, you know, just, I lost my train of thought. Uh, it's We're talking about stress and how, stress. how you, you saw so many people on the road, you know, get into car accidents and how we, we were relating that to like the, the overall stress that we experience in life and, and that, you know, people are just so overwhelmed that they can't focus because we were talking about meditation and how yes, meditation yes. can calm us down meditation, so much. Yes. Yes. So meditation is that structure of support for myself that when I feel stressed, yeah. If I have a long day where I come home and this energy is just rattling off of the walls, yeah. that I can find a place of calm, peace, grounding, yeah. and connect with myself and my breathing and just be and notice when my mind wants to run off and freak out again or yeah. run off and chatter about something else or think about this, try to figure something like, nope, right now is about being right here. Yes. Right now. And I have a mantra of be where you are. Be who you are. Just be where you are. Be who you are. I and, like that. I mean, you spend time with that. This is seven, eight years now into me having this practice, and I feel like it has had an impact positively. I think, you know, a lot of times I, I've, I've spoken to people and they've said similar things like you do. They didn't use the exact phrase, but when we repeat things over and over in our brain and they're positive reinforcements, we start to believe it and it starts to strengthen us and mm -hmm. we don't realize how powerful the mind is. But if we start to really pound it into our brain, we actually will trigger our, our body and our mind to actually do more positive things because we're no longer saying anything negative about ourselves. We're, we're talking about how powerful and how great we are. And then I think it really changes our self-esteem, our self-worth, and it gives us really the resilience to go after whatever we want to go after. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't know if you've ever heard or read the book, uh, You Are the Placebo by Dr. Joe Dispenza, but it talks about this very thing. What you think is how your body responds. If you're yeah. thinking these stressful thoughts, your body's going to be in a stressful state and that you're going to be floating in cortisol all day long, which is not good <laughs> for us. Yeah. You know, so it's thinking, you know, recognizing how to catch yourself in these thoughts, but also recognizing, you know, the power and the benefit, the value of affirmations, of meditation, of you know, where you place your attention is where you place your energy. And if you're placing all yeah. your energy in negative and danger, always thinking I'm going to die at a certain age, I'm going to get cancer at this point. Like if you're always thinking about that, yeah, you can manifest this stuff. Oh, yeah, that is where your mind is. And 
to support our well-being and our critical thinking skills, which isn't always emphasized in our educational system. It's yeah. supporting us so that we can have tools to support our well-being so that we don't create our own mental disorders, our own physical ailments. Like there are things that we can do that are simple enough, but if we don't know and if we aren't supported, we're just kind of out there in the spiral sometimes. Oh, I agree completely. You know, people don't realize that I say it on so many shows, 70% of illnesses are caused by stress. So that tells you there how much stress has an impact on our health. And now if that, if stress could do so much damage to the body, it can even break down the immune system and open up our bodies to different illnesses and mental disorders. Um, you know, think about how important it is to learn techniques to de-stress ourselves and to create change in our lives. You know, it's vital. It's vital for survival. Absolutely. I uh, like working in retail sales. You know, I recognize when I was new as a manager and struggling to, to have my communication be where it needs to get the sales up where they needed to be. I mean, it was I was training staff, the store is busy. It's all happening and it's up to me getting yeah. stress headaches, getting feeling overwhelmed, another opportunity to step away into yeah. my office and take started at two minutes of meditation to catch my breath, calm right. down, and then go back into it. And then went from two to five and then 10, 15. Like I said, I'm up to 30 something minutes now, but that's by choice. I could spend, you know, a lot more time in meditation, but you know, yeah. I, I choose to do other things. But I think that that there's a value that when you have these things going on in your life that are stressful, or if you're in a stressful environment, if you are able to remove yourself from whatever the incident or the situation is, yeah, and just be able to take a few minutes in a quiet space in an office or in a bathroom stall or outside, just taking deep breaths and just take, you know, four deep breaths or, you know, whatever it is, you know, for two minutes of just focusing on your breathing and you notice your mind wandering, just, I'm just focusing on my breathing and just be there. Your mind is going to wonder, going to wonder. We're humans. Our mind is going to wonder. It's okay. Yeah. It's part of the process of meditation is to notice when your mind wants to take off. It's developing a muscle. It's developing your skill and ability to say, this is where I'm placing my attention. This is how I'm able to recharge myself right yeah. now. I can get back to it now. Right. And then be with what is. I, I think that's amazing. And I, I love meditation. One of the reasons why I love meditation is because if you can get yourself to the level that you just described, you could actually, I don't know if this ever happened to you, but you get so calm that, you know, you start really connecting with your intuition and your inner self. And then you could even, you know, thoughts start coming through your head and your subconscious kind of sends you messages that you, you come to conclusions or you realizations that you didn't even realize while you're in that relaxed state of mind. And that's yes. like how powerful the mind can be, I think. It's like, you know, we have a, a, a huge subconscious that, you know, but how do you tap into that subconscious? And I think meditation is, is like a powerful tool that can get us there. What do you Absolutely. think? I agree. Absolutely. I, I, I know like myself, I've worked with hypnotherapists and then just like all of a sudden insight just shows up. It's like, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta write this down or like, I gotta yeah. hold onto this or I just be with this energy, this excitement of this thought and, and just kind of uh, settle back into it. But yeah. Yeah. Um, those insights, they, 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 they do come. I, 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 I think it's great when we do get those insights because then sometimes we realize I've come to realizations where I like, wow, you know what? I didn't realize I felt that way about this, you know, I really need to work on it, you know, because I didn't know it bothered me that much, you know, and, and sometimes it, I think it, it could even bring like repressed emotions up that we didn't even realize. And you hit a word or two, it's like a trigger point, a thought comes in your head and, and just the maybe two, three words can bring up an emotion that you didn't even realize from your subconscious. Have you ever heard of breath work? Yes. Like, I love yeah. breath work. Yeah. How do you, how do you was, like it? In my coaching program, they brought someone in one of the weekends to uh, to do that with us. And like being in that state of guided meditation, I mean, going this level deep and like imagining like walking down these steps and, and being in this place that works for you. Like, what is this beautiful place? I'm by a lake. 
it's, it's like I'm out in the you know Pacific Northwest around mountains yeah. and lakes somewhere out here and and just having this conversation with this image of myself that is like this purest being that I can ask anything to yeah like I had such a, an incredible conversation and then after the 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 session ended they're like okay we're gonna spend 20 minutes write down what happened like write down your experience yeah and I still have it you know when I'm making breakfast some mornings I'll read you know what that experience is be with others you know even though you might not agree with who they are or you might yeah. not have the same values doesn't mean you have to like it right but be with others like love others that's yes. you're about joy you're about happiness sometimes your natural states in play remember this right like, when you're around these other situations it's gonna happen yeah and and being able to come back to to these insights through meditation through breath work it's reinforcing that the journey the work the the this is the guidepost this is the pillar it's yeah. in cement this yes i'm going this way now and for me like having these things posted around my apartment having these experiences and journaling about them and looking at what it really means to me or what do I want to do with it? Yeah. You know, these are such incredible tools that once you start putting them all together, yeah, it's, it's an arsenal. Yeah. I, you know, I, I know many even coaches that do that themselves. They'll have post-its all over the house, you know, and, but it, mm -hmm. it gives them inspiration and they put it places that they're going to see. So if they go in the kitchen, the first thing they're going to see when they eat breakfast is that post-it. And yep. they're going to, you know, it's going to have something that, you know, just to remind them about something important or maybe give them inspiration or motivation, something that they need in the morning, you know, and, and when they go to brush their teeth, they'll have something on the mirror, you know, so it's like, yep. you know, just reminders of certain things to keep that mentality sta stable. And it, I, I think that's a great idea. I like that you mentioned that because I, I think it's important. I really do. Yeah. I even had uh, one of my coaches I worked with. So I'm wearing a, a necklace here, which I got. It's a small hockey puck. I was mm -hmm. a season hit, season ticket holder for a month um, yeah. for the Iowa Wild. They had the this little presentation. So I love hockey, like I said. Yeah. And one of my coaches, she she, I was telling her that I only wear this hockey when or this necklace when I go to hockey games. She's like, but it's something of importance to you. Like, what if it was like an anchor for you? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, maybe. Like, and we were talking about like being with people and that meditation experience I had, and it's like what if it's a trigger for you to remember that you're being with other humans, right? You're being with other people. And so now we're talking about having post-its around, but also the necklace that I wear, whatever I'm stressed, it's like, Oh yeah, I'm, I'm with other humans right now. And sometimes yeah. we can act a little, a little, a little funky, a little off, a little crazy, a little, whatever, yeah. fill in the blank. We're humans. This is part of the experience. And it's just part of the experience. Be with, be with humans, be with another person and bring my joy and, you know, I think that there's value in that because that was almost two years ago as well, them suggesting me wearing this and I'm still wearing it every day. I love it. I love it. You know, and I, I love the fact that you had mentioned earlier that, you know, we could have different thoughts and opinions, but that shouldn't stop us from interacting with other people that might have a difference of opinions. And I, I think that's one of the biggest problems in our society right now is that he, there's so much hatred and anger towards people right now. And if you don't think the way they think, you know, they immediately have anger directed right at you, you know, their energies. And yeah. I really feel like, you know, everybody is entitled to their own opinion. We all live our life, the what, whatever's going to make us happy and bring joy to our life. We're entitled to dress the way we want, think the way we want and have our own opinions of how we think life should you know, how we should live life and we're all mm -hmm. entitled, but that doesn't mean that the person next to you has to have the same beliefs and do the same yes. thing you do. But just because that person has different beliefs and does things differently, it doesn't mean, you know, that you should have anger or hatred towards that person. There's no reason why you can't get along just because mm -hmm. your opinions are different, you know, and, and you shouldn't let that reflect on each other. You shouldn't, you shouldn't stop that from getting to know another human being. You know, we should respect that everybody is their own person and they're, mm -hmm. they, they, everybody has the ability to, to create the life that's going to be suitable and make them happy and bring joy yes. to their life. Yes, absolutely. You know, one of the things I learned in when I was in the program in the coaching program was that what it means for me to be an integrity mm -hmm. is not the same as for another to be an integrity. Yeah. And 
my way is not the only way and my right. way is not the right way air quotes there is no right wrong way there's right. just what is there's a way and we're all trying things you know yeah. so to be with others and to recognize that where i'm coming from i might be holding an expectation or a judgment or whatever against yeah. someone else but their life experience is something else and yes. shape their worldview 100% and Something that I've learned from the book, The Last Word on Power, is about the universal human paradigm. And that is that there is a way that things should be. And when things are that way, things are right. But when things aren't that way, there's something wrong with either me or the you or the environment, something else. But yeah. there is a way things should be. And it's not true. No. It's, it's to shift this paradigm of take the shoulds out of it. Yes. You know, I, I, I agree a hundred percent with you. And I, I, that's one change in our society that I think people really have to take consideration. We have to respect each other and respect that everybody has different beliefs and different values and a different way of living. And the point that you brought up is extraordinary that we all come from a different set of shoes, our pathways of all, you know, until you walk through someone's shoes, mm -hmm. you can't really place judgment because unless you live their life and gone through what they've gone through, you know, that leads to a lot of the way we think, a lot of the decisions we make and the way we grow up, the environment, there's lots of factors to take in, but we should all show respect. And if, if that could be a change that's incorporated in our society, I think society would be a better place is just being more open to respect others and their opinions, but not be judgmental. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that journey also re regard, it also dealt with me dealing with my own judgment and recognizing how I grew up around judge judgment and how I learned to utilize it. Yeah. What it was for self-protection or whatever. So it's just, it's one of those things. If we're on the journey of, of developing and recognizing these areas, I mean, it's not like I sought out to be, to figure out this specific thing. It's yeah. just, it's part of the entire package of who Jeremy Stiegel is and his experience yes, exactly. that he's creating. And I, I feel like life has its own journey for us. I really feel like a lot of times, you know, a good portion of our life is planned out, but there are things in life that could kind of, you know, take us on a different path. But, you know, what we put in our head when we're young and what actually happens as we get older, I know for me, it was completely opposite. And, and I hear that from lots and lots and lots of people. Life just takes you on a journey and you kind of, got, you, you got to just go with the flow and let it take you. You know, and I think if you're, you know, if the people who are hesitant of change and they don't go with the flow, those are the people who are, end up suffering. But the people who see change coming and they're journeying on a different path and they just let the journey keep rolling, I think that's when those are the people who excel and become a better person. Mm -hmm. So we have to be open to change and we can't close the doors on change. I feel like, I feel like you have to be open to change. Don't be scared of it. Overcome those fears. And do you have any good suggestions about overcoming those fears? Uh, I, I mean, I've gone through many different like live personal development events to, to, to deal with my own fear. I know I went through an exercise where they had these gigantic arrows. They were flimsy but they mm -hmm. looked daunting. And the, the the exercise was to put the tip of the arrow to your throat. Yeah. And the other end was going to be on a person's hand and you just take a step forward and the, and the arrow will snap. But <laughs> if you hesitate, it won't snap and it'll jar you in the throat. Right. And it was interesting because you could see people hesitating and them responding and you could hear the, the stick snapping. And for me, what I wrote on my arrow was I'm stepping through fear because I knew that there was always going to be a barrier of, what if I'm not sure? Yeah. Uh, you don't know. You never know. Yeah. But if I took that one step and I'd snap that stick, damn it, I'm stepping forward and I'm stepping through fear. And mm -hmm. for me, I mean, I'm a unique individual, I feel. So, I mean, I think there are people out there that will go on a journey and put themselves in situations to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, but being a sales rep as I was, I was calling on uh, apartment con uh, complexes. So I'd walk into a leasing office and 10 people turn around like, who is this guy? <laughs> and it's like, how can I get comfortable with that awkward situation and bring my joy and show up and deliver? Yeah. And I got comfortable with that. And mm -hmm. going through these live events and putting myself in front of other people going through their stuff 
and actually following through on the exercises is like, I'm developing confidence in myself. I'm remembering yeah. what it is that I did before. I'm reconnecting to who I was and to who I am, remembering who I am, right. coming alive. And so putting myself in intentional situations for a specific developmental reason, yeah. I hired a writing coach. So I was writing a book. I went to a coaching program because I wanted to figure out how to be a coach and yeah. write about that. You know, all these I mean, I hired a coach to help me with, with write, starting my blog. Uh, with my blog, it's like yeah. every step of the way, I sought out intentional help because I knew that I would hesitate, I would lose momentum, yeah, I'll shy away, and so noticing where I won't show up, I brought support in yeah. to be there to have accountability, right? Because when someone else is going to ask you, "Why didn't you do this thing?" Mm -hmm. Like, I was scared. You were scared. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, tell me about that. Let's. Let's, let's be with what that was then. And I think that's exactly. the value of a coach or of a therapist who can yeah. settle down what's chattering and recognize what's there so that you recognize that fear is in your head. Action yeah. cures fear. So stepping through that arrow, stepping in, into action, continuing to make myself uncomfortable or be scared when I'm doing something. Yeah. Coming out on the other side, you're a different person. Yeah. You have experience now. You right. have some information to move forward with. Right. I think that's an absolutely phenomenal answer. You really hit all the points right on the bucket. You know, you you talked about facing your fears and you talked about, you know, you know, just being able to build on your confidence. And by facing your fears, you you help to build your confidence. And then you worked on skills to build your confidence. And then you got help. You got help in areas that you you knew that you weren't yet, you know, a par, you know, so you went and yeah. got help so you could, you could learn how to be better, you know, and that's yeah. the tool is reaching out, reaching out. There's nothing wrong with reaching out for a coach. There's nothing wrong with reaching out for help because when people give you unbiased opinions and they give you directions and they teach you from a different perspective, a lot of light bulbs can go off and mm -hmm. a lot of progress can be made. You know, so I think that's a great answer. I totally do. Now, with our conversation, like if you had to like focus on some of the main um, areas of our conversation, what are like maybe three turning points that you'd like to emphasize that, you know, you really feel that would benefit the listeners today? Yeah. Um, noticing emotion and writing about it, mm -hmm. engaging with that, that relationship development through the journaling process. Yeah. You know, where do you get overwhelmed? Where do you get stressed? What is it that you really want that's not being said? Right. You know, I think that that is a fantastic tool to move forward with. You know, also talking about the shoulds earlier. You know, I think that, you know, if I could suggest reading the book, um, the, uh, the Last Word on Power by Tracy Goss, it's a fantastic book on leadership. And it helps just talk about creating change in our lives and yeah. about those shoulds and these barriers of expectation and to help us let go yeah. and that helps support change because just being there each day and like all of a sudden you're, you're 10 years down the road, like, holy crap, I've gone a completely different direction. Yeah. But it didn't wreck it. It didn't realize it didn't feel like that in the moment though. Right. And so being present in the moment, noticing your emotions, having that relationship, recognizing your context to what is and in society, in our own community, in our relationships. Yeah. Um, I think those are great places to begin because there is a depth to that alone. And yeah. if we're just glossing over the surface, if I suggest a bunch of things, mm -hmm. people are just going to, oh, I might do this, I might do this, I might do this. Let's do one thing and do that thing. Yeah. Consistently. Mm -hmm. I like that. I like that a lot. Now you have written a book and you're working on another book, I think you said. Yeah. Yes. I am starting my third now. Yes. Excellent. So why don't you tell us a little about your first and second book and where we can find them? Absolutely. Yes. So uh, my first book, again, it's called Where the Change Happens. Um, it, I, it is available on Amazon currently um, on Audible as well. Um, it's about, again, my personal development transformation after divorce, recognizing that I was missing purpose and meaning in my life. Yeah. And I want to figure out what direction to go. Right. So the book is about the exercises that I was trying, what I was listening to and reading and inspired by that. I think 
could lend some inspiration or support in coming up with new structures or practices that might support your journey in creating meaningful change in your life. Uh, the second book that I wrote is called After the Divorce, From Looking Back to Leaning In. And that is a fiction story about an individual going through the journey of divorce and recognizing he's got those repeating patterns. And he's trying to figure out how to get himself going in the right direction that he really yeah. finds important and how a coach can actually support that journey moving forward. I I, like I, I, it's a, it's incredible. That's like, I wrote this. <laughs> but, <laughs> but when you're being so immersed in it, I'm like, I, I was, I was really pouring into it. So yeah. I think that people will find that it's a relatable story, something of like, you could see your neighbor doing this or yeah. that could be you or you know, it could be a friend. Um, and that book actually inspired me to reconnect to something I used to do when I was younger, which is recording music. Right. Um, and the story, I describe a scene where the main character is listening to the radio and having this emotional response to the song playing. Yeah. And I figured, why not record an actual representation of that song and put it out there and yeah. see what happens. And so I call, I wrote the song called Hard Questions and um, it's, you know, available on Spotify, iTunes, streaming all over the place. Um, and that process led me to recording new music about my own self-expression and personal development, my personal journey, just sharing emotions and that life, that human experience, yeah. relatable, but also creative. And I, you know, I, I, I grew up playing, you know, saxophone, taught myself yeah. how to play guitar 20 years ago. So I'm like, why not do something with this? And so now I have a, a side gig. Uh, my band is called Steg, S-T-E-G. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but I've got albums that are out. I'm working on, on my third album as well. But my third oh, wow. book, <laughs> I, I yes, I, I'm just a, bro, a ball of energy and creativity over here. <laughs> so the second book led to recording music. But then I'm also working on my third book, which is going to be on management and leadership in the workplace and why new managers struggle to lead. Because this entire journey started with me getting promoted in the workplace and yeah. having deficiencies in communication and leadership, and then getting into the territory and sales, you know, getting sales, prospecting, all the stuff. But it's also like, you know, I've also been a manager that people didn't want to listen to. Right. I used to be the guy when I was 19 at working at a movie theater, walking around with write ups in my pocket, just hoping mm -hmm. someone wouldn't tell, wouldn't do what I asked them to, or what I told them to do. Yeah. So I write them up. That <laughs> does not get people in action. So, yeah. you know, sharing what my journey was through management and leadership and all the reading that I've done through psychology, through coaching, and just coming across in a new way that we can apply in the workplace that might support relationships and creating cultures that really, I mean, just expand everything that the business and relationships are about. It's, I mean, yes, you'll be more profitable. You'll be more productive. The relationships and workplace will be deeper, deeper. So you've got better communication. You're working together as more collaboration, and teamwork and synergy. Yeah. You know, I just, I have this vision and, um, yeah, I'm working on it. So it'll probably be about another year or so until that's done, but it's coming. Oh, I love it. I love it. And also what services do you, I know you have a, 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 a wide variety of services that you offer. What are some of the services that you offer? Yeah. So I also uh, do coaching as well. Um, whether it's one-on-one -on -one helping, you know, clients make cre or create meaningful change in their life, whether it's their relationships, their workplace, you know, I had someone I was working with, they wanted to run for mayor. And as we got into our sessions, it, it became more about creating a safe space for teenagers in her mm -hmm. community. And so you never know where I never know where these conversations are going to go, but yeah. for those who are interested, who have an idea, something that they want to create, but they're not sure where to start. Yeah. Or, or they're just afraid to begin. They just want to have a conversation about something. Yeah. You think it's pie in the sky. It's not pie in the sky. I mean, who says it's not possible if right. you're not going to take any action to create it? Because we don't know what's possible until we take action. So, so if you are true. interested in creating new momentum in your life, um, you can reach out at connect at where the change happens dot com. Um, I also do uh, men's group coaching for divorce, you know, creating a safe space for men to yeah. share what it is that we brought to relationships, our vulnerabilities, and be able to come together in community and say, this is what we want to create moving forward. And yeah. then having that male support on that journey so that we can be the men that we want to be in this world. There's not always a lot of support groups for men. Yeah. And so I want to be a resource to support men who are open to being supported or want to take a first step 
or maybe right. have an introduction. You never know who we might be able to connect each other to. So exactly. Yeah. This is amazing. And a lot of this stuff is online. So they could they yeah. can make appointments with you online. Oh, awesome. Yeah. And so you can could... visit uh where the change happens.com. That's my website okay. as well. And then I've got a YouTube page for where the change happens coaching. Um, I'm on Instagram for where the change happens coaching as well. And LinkedIn, um, Jeremy Stiegel. Uh, you can find me and we can connect there. And I, I mean, we make connections everywhere. So please feel free to reach out. Amazing. This has been amazing, Jeremy. Thank you so much for coming on the show. You That's provided amazing. us with a, a wealth of information. And I think it's so important for people to understand that change is so important for our, our mental and our physical growth and, you know, and our spiritual growth, you know, and it plays a factor in, in every area of our life. And that, you know, it's possible for people who fear change, it's possible. And for people who want to change, but they just don't know how they need to find someone like you who could help them, you know, and, and the, and the tips that you provided today are really easy tips to implement into your life that could actually get you on the way. So I, I really thank you so much for coming on the show. You've been a, a great inspiration and I really value your information. Thank you. Thank you, Stacey. It's been my pleasure to be here and everyone. So I want to share one last secret. You are where the change happens. I love that. I love that. You are super, Jeremy. You are the man. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Stacey. This has been uh, wonderful. Uh, I'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much for being on the show. Pleasure.